In this video, we're going to be going over rotational equations for accelerated motion. So I'm gonna remind you about the variables, we're gonna go over the uh, new equations we need to add, and then we're gonna see an example. I put this in here from South Park. <laughs> if you're calculating the angular velocity, you're gonna have a rad time. <laughs> it's supposed to be bad time. But this is actually relevant here. So again, in the linear world, we had S was displacement in meters. Well, now we have, do you remember? It's delta theta. That's what we use here, angular displacement. And what units do we use here? We use radians. That's why we have this rad over time. You'll see that in a second here. Initial speed was u. Now we call it omega i. That's the initial angular velocity. And omega f is the final angular velocity. And those then are in this rad time. So these are in radians per second. So is this. Okay, so this is in radians per second. So if you just think about the rotational world, just like the linear world, there you go. Um, again, angular acceleration, instead of A, we use alpha, but again, this is just in radians per second squared. So that's gonna be nice here, okay. And then we have time, of course, we still use T and it's still in seconds. So that, luckily that one doesn't really change. So let's actually go ahead and look at the equations of motion. In the linear world, you're used to these. These are your four equations of motion for accelerated motion when you're accelerating. We had S equals U plus V over two times T. Well, now we have the rotational version. So again, it's important to just remember what all these are because I'm just gonna be making this substitution. That's it. So we have a rotational equation here and it goes like this. I'll write them maybe in green because these are on your formula booklet. So let's see here, instead of S equals U plus V over two times T, we're gonna have, well, remember what S was? S is delta theta. So we have delta theta equals, and what was the initial speed? Oh yeah, that was omega I plus omega F over two, all that times t. This is your first of your four big equations of motion, these big four here. All right, how about this one? V equals u plus at. Well, here we have the same idea here, except we're going to go vf, this is the final, uh, sorry, not vf, omega f, equals omega i, that's the initial speed, plus at, where remember what a is, a is alpha. t is still the same though. So there's your second of your big four equations of motion for accelerated motion. Now this one here, S equals UT plus half AT squared. Let's think, now S again, remember is delta theta. And so we have UT, well U isn't U anymore. Remember it's omega I times T plus one half. And instead of A, you remember it's alpha. So it's alpha T squared. So do you see this isn't so bad at all? This is just a matter of making that substitution. That's it. All right, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Well, V, remember, is omega F. So we have omega F squared equals omega I squared, the initial angular velocity here. Uh, so you have a final angular velocity squared equals the initial angular velocity squared plus 2. And remember what A is? A is alpha, and S is delta theta. So here are your equations of motion, all four of them. We've got them right here. Yay. So this right here, really important, we need those. Why do we need them? Because now we can solve questions. So for example, if we have this right here, we have a wheel and it rotates initially at 22 radians per second. Let's already, before we do anything else, I'm just gonna write down my given values here. So I know initially omega i is 22 radians per second. All right, and it accelerates to this amount, so 49 radians per second. Does that make sense? This must be my final angular velocity, so that must be 49 radians per second. All right, let's take a look at what else then. Uh, oh, and the time is 7.2 seconds, so I know that t equals 7.2 seconds. All right, now what? We want the angular acceleration. What are we looking for here? This is important. What are we looking for here? This is alpha. So really then, this is the key thing here, we want alpha. And we have omega i, omega f, and t. So we're looking for an equation that has alpha, has omega i, omega f, and t, perhaps. So let's take a look. Do we have any equations here? Do you notice we want to try to avoid thetas here? So we don't want this one, because we don't know theta. We don't want this one. We don't want this one. Does it make sense? We gotta use this one then. So omega f equals omega i plus alpha t. So I'm gonna write down that equation. So I'm gonna use omega f equals omega i plus 
alpha times t. And it's just as easy as just putting in your substitutions now. So I know this is 49. Everything here has proper units, so we're fine here. Equals 22 plus in parentheses here. Well, actually, we're looking for alpha, actually, aren't we? Alpha times 7.2. All right, so to do this, then I'm just going to do 49 minus 22. You know what I'll do this on my calculator. Here. So I'm going to do 49 minus 22, right? Because that's going to give me at least the left side here. I want to divide that by 7.2. That's going to give me alpha. And alpha is going to be 3.75. So I have 3.75. Now what are the units? And by the way, we also need to think about um, significant figures. Do you notice I'm allowed two here, two here, two here? So I should actually say alpha is approximately equal to, and I'll do it to two significant figures, so three point, this must be an eight, and remember it's in radians per second, whoops, like this, radians per second squared. That is my final answer, and we've solved it. So what have we done here? We've gone through, remember, we've gone through these different variables. We saw these four equations of motion, and then we were able to apply them. And lots of examples like this could exist on exams. And some of these are actually going to be really straightforward. If you don't panic, you just transpose each of these variables to the rotational equivalents. You're going to be just 